and welcome back. Today, as per request, we are flying out the LA-5 FN. And it's the actual Russian version, not the premium German one that I also have in my inventory. Before we get started today, thank you to all my patrons and everyone looking to plaster this absolutely amazing abomination all over the vehicle. You can get it by using my discount code down below. The LA-5 FN. What is this thing like? Well, we're gonna go right into it. This is what it's like. It's actually too fast for its own good. I'm trying to aim... Look at this lockup. My control surfaces are basically non-existent. The second you go over like 610-ish, the second you go pretty quickly, this thing will turn into an absolute brick. Now it's not quite an lactory where you will have zero elevator authority and you will fly straight into the ground. But it's pretty close to it and you still rip at like 720. It's quite similar to the Yaks. It's nothing like the LA-7 in that regard. Well, it is in terms of the rip speed, but the LA-7 actually doesn't compress. And the LA-7 is much nicer to fly. The LA-5 is by no means a bad vehicle, but the main issue I really ran into is simply the teams being too one-sided. Very often I would get one or two kills. Basically every game I did will be in this video. And it's mostly to just show you a little bit of an average. I didn't really get anything stellar. But I can say that this thing is pretty consistent and it's pretty good at what it does. It's very important to pick your targets because you can't really dive that far down. So you really want to work your way down and start with the highest people. It's not mainly because you won't get your energy back very quickly. It is mainly because you're going to lose a lot of energy. This is full pull. This is my full turn. And you're basically not maneuvering at all. And it's very energy inefficient. If you go very fast and you're locking up, you're diving and diving more. And every kilometer an hour that you dive over your top speed in a straight line, in the long run, is kind of going to hamper your energy. Because you're wasting a lot of it. You want to kind of break off before that. But you reach 600 kilometers an hour so quickly in this thing. Especially below floor 4 kilometers. Which I do recommend you to stay below. Of course, initially climb above it. But after the fight has started, you don't need to keep climbing after 4,000 meters. It's really not that necessary. And the performance is plenty good down low. Down low, the performance is pretty good. It turns quite alright. Now, it's not a Yak or a Spitfire or a Zero or anything like that. But it's pretty close to something like a 109. Which isn't the best. But the flaps on this thing are actually pretty nice. Now, I don't want to really deal with an SB2C that's right above us. So I'm just going to keep flying. And the second he starts turning, I'm going to turn around and deal with him. Why is the SB2C really that much of a threat? No, but it's extremely annoying if the rest of his team is still alive. Right now, he's occupied with someone. This is a first-rate rat plane. So I want to kill him right here and now. Issue is I miss all my shots, but he turns back into my guns. So I can get a very easy crit in, otherwise I would have had to break off. But once the SB2C gets crit, he's going to turn into a frisbee and he's going to accomplish absolutely nothing. We line up for the pilot kill. Unfortunately for us, he bails out and he actually survives. Which is kind of unlucky because I really wanted to commit a war crime today. But alas, we will go towards our next victim, which is the F6F. And why am I going to show you this skill? Well, it's mainly to show you what a lot of people do wrong. And it's not so much about what I do. And it's mostly about what the F6F is doing. So, what is he doing? Well, he has some altitude and he wants to use it, which is perfectly fine. The issue is, he has all the ability right now to actually kill us. The issue is that the F6F doesn't climb that well. And if we keep our speed up, we are going to be able to just intercept him. Now, he still has a better energy state than us. And he can energy trap us quite handily here, especially now our web runs out. But he's very occupied by trying to use his altitude advantage. Which is completely understandable. But if you're going this slow, you're making yourself very susceptible to someone shooting at you. You underlead a little bit. Overlead, I mean. So we correct our aim. We shoot again. Miss a little bit again. Looks good, but he actually dodges. So then we shoot a little bit of a vertical line. And he dodges right into it. Right now his crit it didn't really do that much. To him, I didn't get a notification on the bottom right, so he's probably not really that crippled. And now he has the altitude and energy advantage. Yeah, he should have a very easy time by just going up here and killing me right now. Or maybe do a horizontal turn and keep turning. The issue is, he goes horizontal for a little bit and then he keeps flying straight again, giving us a lot of position. Then he waits a little bit before he finally turns in and he just gives us the shot. So, what did he do wrong? 
Well, he didn't make up his mind. He tried to do three things at once. He went for the energy trap, then for a turn fight, then back to the energy trap. And at the end of the day, because he didn't do anything, he just flew around with his dick in his hand. So make up your mind and unless it's going absolute tits up, most of the time you should just stick to it. Because, well, otherwise you're just giving the guy a lot of position. So we tap into the fight. That's why we're so late. And the P38 is already going for us. So we dive a little bit to pick up some speed. And the P38 is also playing that compressors quite badly. And right now he's riding our ass. He breaks off a little bit at an inopportune time. So we shoot at him. We miss. Shoot again. And we get a crit. We shoot some more. Just to make sure. We miss. Shoot some more. Nothing. But he is crit. And for now... I don't know what he's gonna do, but I just want to keep my eye on him so he doesn't actually come back for us. But I do know that he's crit, and a P-38 with damage is quite unbearable to fly. I know most planes aren't very much fun to fly once they're crit. P-38 is a prime example of it. P-51 coming in, we are not quite sure which one it is. Looks like a 20mm version, and it is. And then there is also a P-61 above us. And I'm scared of the third party, so instead of going vertical, I'm actually gonna go downwards, drop the throttle, try to outturn this guy and get behind him. And if I do get third party, at least the P61 or the P38 will have to waste a lot of energy. Pull in front of him, try to bait him into taking a shot. He does so, he gives us a little bit of position. Right now we're slower than him, and we are gonna make it so that he passes in front of us. We have successfully reversed. 109 comes in to help, absolute waste of energy, but you know, you do you. And then the P51 goes vertical. This is kind of a tough situation because if I dive out this guy is 100% killing me and if I go up I'm making myself pretty susceptible to the P38 as well as the P61 but I have to take it because there's a chance they won't go for me but this guy is 100% going to catch me if I let him do that kind of maneuver so I kill him and then just in time I get my energy back to deal with the crit P38 as well as the P61 that's not really going for us just yet P38 is very much Licking his lips right here and he's not going to be breaking off so I need to make sure that he gets reversed He gets reversed and now I'm too slow to really do anything I'm not that fast I need to take these head-ons because I don't I can't let these guys turn around for me because I can't start a dogfight with them This is one of the opportunities where the P38 presents itself And in this kind of sense I don't want to deal with a zero at like 500 kilometers an hour So if he starts pushing head-on I'm going to take it but I'm going to shoot way before him I hit him before he even started shooting basically but he does get a few rounds off and he does manage to nick us in the end do not take head-ons with people if you can't freely dogfight them it's an absolute waste but these guys were all packed on the ground i'm not that quick and if i have to deal with all three of them on my six i am completely boned the p51 rtbs and i don't have to deal with the other people because we actually kill them in that engagement right there the p51 here is being set up by the 190 and he's just completely I mean, I, there's really nothing to talk about. But I have a feeling here. Yep, there he is. He is mad that he didn't get a kill. So what do we do? We cut throttle a little bit because he's way, way faster. We instantly get position. He turns back in and he would have died right about four seconds later. But the match ended. How lucky for him. So, pure Mursky. Exceptionally dangerous in this thing. But... It also compresses quite badly. So what do I want to do? I want him to dive on us. So that the teammate that's right above us can actually help us out. He doesn't dive on us. But that means that we can turn around. And actually start intervening. And turn this into a little bit of a 2v1. Because that plane is extremely strong. And I don't really want to deal with him. So I'm just going to pitch up for him. And he hope that he goes and try and energy trap us. If he doesn't. If he does go for the shot there for us. Then he won't get the shot. Because we were in a good position. We stall him out for the LA-7. And he gets absolutely cleaned up. And why is something like a pure Mursky above you so annoying even though he can't dive at all? Just like us. Because if someone dives on you, you cannot dive offensively or defensively. You can't really dive at all. And if you're too slow, you are a sitting duck. So if you have someone above you with a better climb rate that can catch you, that can dive quicker than you, that is more maneuverable than you, you're gonna have a little bit of an issue because you can't really do much about it. Sure, you're quick. But you're not that fast. Sure you're maneuverable. But you're not that maneuverable. This thing is very average in a lot of senses. It has some strong suits. Definitely. But this thing also suffers from some very minute things. That really just kill this kind of playstyle. Right here everyone is on the deck. And I'm forced to take the fight down low. 
that's good for us. The issue is they're all so low that I can't just dive on them and start picking them off. I'm looking for the highest targets, that's why I broke off and I went for the J26 and the guy next to him. The J26 stalls himself out, makes himself a very easy kill. Very easy kill, thank you. And we send him back to the hangar. Who do we want to go for now? The J21 is going vertical, he's right ahead of us. And we just need to keep diving into this direction. You're starting to see though that I'm already going way too quick. I'm almost unable to get the shot in there. Luckily we do take his wingtip or we damage his engine a little bit. And he is going to go and kiss the ground. This is how you fly this thing unfortunately. There is not much to dogfight. You can dogfight the Germans for the most part. But I'm just not a big fan of this plane. I much prefer the LA-7. I much prefer the, the Yaks. The LA-5, maybe the first ones are more fun to fly. But with how good the teams are and how one-sided they are, you, you kind of just boom and zoom in. You're kind of just flying this thing like a 190 that can turn somewhat at lower speeds but can't turn whatsoever at higher speeds. So pick your poison really. I'm not a very big fan of these. They are pretty good vehicles. But I'm just not, not a massive fan of them. Now what you can do of course on the deck, if everyone is on the deck and you're just going very fast in a merge because this plane is pretty quick, you can energy trap them and you are maneuverable enough to do them in right then and there. The issue is that's mostly not how the games progress and very often you get people diving on you, very often you have to dive on people and that's just something this thing is not very good at in terms of dealing with it. Pf109 or Pf110 really not going to accomplish that much and after the 190 as well as the wife and have base camped for a little bit they finally decide to start a side climb so what do we do we put the smoke on because i am waiting to finally get a dogfight and maybe show you how maneuverable how or or how unmaneuverable this thing really is i'm just trying to showcase you this plane however it is very hard to showcase a vehicle if the enemy is not willing to cooperate which is well, it kind of was the issue with this thing the enemy just really didn't want to cooperate with my gameplay and i just ended up doing basically nothing and this guy is just basically afk correct her aim a little bit and there's a lot of rounds going his way he does get crit he does get damaged and now i mean he's just gonna be very slow he's tumbling left and right and he's about to go into a flat spin. There we go. Frisbee alert. And then we take another millimeter of his wing off. And then it certainly counts as a kill. And then the last guy is a wyvern. And really no one wanted to cooperate. Especially in the enemy team. So I'm terribly sorry. That's why this video is so short. I try to make something out of it. But there is really just nothing to showcase. If I don't get decent games to actually showcase. And that's also a little bit of the fault of the vehicle itself. It's a bit of a straightforward one. It's a bit of a boom and zoom plane. It can dogfight. But with the teams. The matchmaker. And just the enemies not really wanting to take any fights. That is mostly what your games are going to look like. So hope it wasn't too annoying. Hope you enjoyed it. And I see you all in the next one.